Hi guys, Jenny here again. Now one of the cool features about Home Assistant is that if there's something you want it to do that it can't already do, there's nothing stopping you creating your own custom component. And this is exactly what I've done a couple of times. The first component I'm going to show you is my anniversaries countdown sensor. And what this does is count down to any specific date that you've told it in advance. So this could be a birthdays or anniversaries or any other date that you like. It'll keep counting down each year until it gets to zero and then start again. This means that you can use this information to give you a warning or change the colour of your lights or whatever else you like in your Home Assistant automations. Now, one of the easiest ways to put on other people's custom components is to use the Home Assistant Community Store, or HACKS. If you haven't already got this installed, I'm going to show you how to do that first of all. If you have, feel free to skip ahead. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install HACKS. To do that, we're going to come to this web page. I'll post the link down below. That is the Hacks release page. And we need to download the zip file from here. If there's a newer version by the time you come to do this, that will be listed there. So go ahead and download the zip file. Okay, here it is. Hacks.zip. So what we need to do is we need to extract all of the files from in there. <coughs> With that done, we need to copy that file into our Home Assistant configuration. So to do that, we can copy it from there. And I'm using Samba, so I can put in my IP address in there go to the config folder of Home Assistant and then we need to paste that into the custom components folder. If you haven't already got one just go ahead and make it. I can paste that into there and there we go. Okay the next thing we need to do is restart Home Assistant. So all we've got to do is go over to server controls and hit restart. Whilst that's restarting, we need to generate ourselves a GitHub personal access token. And we do that on this page in GitHub. It's in settings, tokens, which is in the developer settings section of the settings menu. If you haven't already got a GitHub account, go ahead and make one. It's a free account. Once in here, we need to generate a new token. We give it a name that we can remember what it is. I've called it hacks.dev because this is for my development environment. And then press generate token. At this point, this is the only time we're going to see this. So we will never be able to see this code again. So make sure that you copy it now. Okay, now that Home Assistant has restarted, we can come into Configuration, Integrations. Click Add and scroll down till we find Hacks. In the top here, we're going to paste in the personal access token that we got from GitHub. The side panel title is whatever the title will be here. You can leave it as community or change it to whatever you like. This is the icon that will appear again in the sidebar. And you've got the option to enable app daemon apps discovery and tracking, Python scripts discovery and tracking, and themes discovery and tracking. I'm going to turn all of these on and then press submit. You'll notice over here the little C has appeared. That is the icon for hacks. We can press finish and we can come over here. We can see we've got this orange bar running across the top. This is hacks updating itself. 
This will take a little while. It's updating information about all the repos that are available on Hacks. So we'll wait a minute and come back and have a look at it again. OK, Hacks has finished what it was doing and it's given us the onboarding welcome page. It only shows us this once, but it gives us a few useful links. You won't see it again, so if there's anything you want to make note of, do so at this time. We can press continue and it gives us a lot of information telling us how Hacks works and how to use it. I'm going to skip through most of this. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install my anniversary sensor. To do that, we're going to go to integrations and it's going to give us a list of all the integrations that we can download to our Home Assistant interface. So you're free to scroll through all of these at any time and install them or remove them as you like. The anniversary sensor is the one we're looking at today. Once it's finished downloading the information about the integration, we can go ahead, read all the information about it that's come from GitHub. We can either press repository, which will take you to the GitHub repo for the integration, or we can press install. So we'll go ahead and press install. Once it's finished downloading, it'll tell us if it needs to restart Home Assistant. Some things will and some won't. In this case we do, so we can press the Restart Home Assistant right in Hacks and it'll go ahead and restart Home Assistant. We can see it's lost the connection, so again we're going to wait a little while and come back and then we can set up our individual sensors. Okay, so Home Assistant's now back online. And we can scroll down on the Hacks page to see the information about the integration. This has got the configuration information. It tells us we can either use the config flow or we can use configuration YAML. There's an example for the configuration YAML and all the configuration parameters that we can use. But we're going to use the integrations page, which is in configuration integrations, because it's a lot quicker and easier. We press the plus, choose anniversaries, and then just fill in the form. We put in the name of the event we want to track and the first date it happened. If we want to change any of these, we can go ahead and change them. Otherwise, we just press submit. And there we are. Back on the overview page, because I'm not using a custom Lovelace page on this, we can see it's come straight up as a badge. There it is, Jenny's birthday, 165 days to go. That'll keep going and count down until it gets to zero, and then it'll start all over again. We don't need to touch it again. So there we go. Okay, so we can go ahead and use that sensor to create automations for cool stuff to happen in our house. If we want any more, we can just go ahead and add them again in the integrations page. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and pressing the bell button so that you're notified when I upload a new video. Next time, I'm going to show you my calendarific sensor. This gets information from the calendarific website and gives us information about various public holidays. So I'll see you in that video.